Hello everyone, this is DA from E Academy and today this video is about the proof of the Han Banach theorem or we can also say this is the second part of the Han Banach theorem video. So let's start proving this Han Banach theorem. So the very first thing that we have to see is that here the u that is a subspace or we can also say that a uh, subset so u must not be equal to v here u is is subset of v and in the theorem we say that u is subspace of v and the relation that f node is a function from u to r this is a field element because we are proving this Anbanak theorem in in that real space that is why the field is taken the real space here so the u is strictly a subset of v when we're talking about that it is a subspace of v because if u is equal to v if u is equal to v then it is as trivial just by we have, we just have to apply the definition of the extension or extension functional on f note so the first thing is that u is not equal to v now we will proceed the proof the second thing is that we have a target of taking that f naught to that p that we are we are going to extend this functional f naught such that uh, the function we are looking for a function which gives the same values uh, that is less than p of x but taking the values for all x and v so we have to do this on on u that is subspace of v we will not apply this on u and then arbitrarily from u to suddenly whole v we will looking for a space that is larger than u and less than v and then for that larger than larger than that space and so on till we will reach that space v so now the target is to looking for a space that satisfies the property of extension uh, for every element of within that space and then we will proceed that to whole space v so the very first step is of looking for a space v1 that is larger than u but that is less than v and not equal to v so that we can talk about the elements of u and outside from u that in within v so let's take an element uh, from v1 or let's say outside from from u so name it z so that we have an element z that is from u that is from v outside from u and the elements of v1 that have can that have an element of of that must have an element of u as well and other elements that are not in u but in v so we'll make the set v1 as we have an element x plus alpha z why we are making elements of such type x plus alpha z because we are looking for the elements of u and outside from u without violating the condition that function f not of x gives the values or images of f, f not of x is less than p of x for all the elements that are taken from u so now we have v1 x plus alpha z where x is taken from u obviously and alpha is the field element or we can also say that it is taken from r now we have to check that whether v1 is the it's a right choice or not by looking that it is a linear functional or it is true that this v1 satisfies the extension property or the majority in property now let's work on this set but before going to this we have to we have to define a function on this v1 space because from v we have a function p that gives the images uh, that gives images in r 
we have f node as a function from u that gives images of u in r now we have a function we must have a function from v1 to r and we will name that f1 that is a function from v1 to r and now we're looking at the image of the elements of v1 because if we are looking the values let's okay let's take an element of from v1 that is x plus alpha z and this must be equal to f1 of x plus f of alpha z because now because x is taken from u and u is an element u have a function f we are defining the function f naught from u so f one of x is just as f naught of f naught of x plus f of alpha z now we must have to extract the alpha out from that function f one so f one or z f one on z the image of z with f one is indeed a real number because we are looking here so we'll name it that a so we have named that image f1 of z that a so we have f1 x plus alpha z is equal to f naught of x plus alpha a where a is equal to f1 of z and a is any real number so this defining of the function also implies that f1 is a linear functional on v1 because f1 of x plus alpha z is just as f1 of x plus alpha f of z just because f1 doesn't violate the condition of the function that uh, whenever we take the value whenever we take the element from u the function f naught will work on that all of the values that are taken from u so that is why that is f naught of x so the functional that are defined on that is defined on v1 is a linear functional now we will looking forward we will check it that whether it is also true for the extension property as a whole uh, with respect to that functional p that is defined in v that is our target is that functional f1 that is defined on v1 is less than or equal to p that is defined on v so we will prove this that if this is true if this is true then we have uh, f naught that is extended to that space v1 in the um, in the shape of v f1 so let's talk about this side we can also write this as that this is our target f1 x plus alpha z is less than or equal to p x plus alpha z so now this is just uh, the definition of the function we will write this as f naught of x plus alpha a where a is f1 x f1 z so this is f naught of x plus alpha a just as the definition of the function of the functional f1 on v1 now here is alpha alpha is any possible real value that is from the field element so alpha have both possibilities of greater than zero of less than zero so let's discuss the case when it is greater than zero firstly we'll divide both sides by alpha so we have one by alpha f naught of x plus alpha a by alpha that is less than or equal to one by alpha p of x plus alpha z so now because the functional f naught is also linear so alpha can go inside we have x by alpha plus that is alpha a by alpha we have a here that is less than or equal to because p is also a linear functional so x by alpha plus alpha z by alpha we have z here so now we have this inequality by dividing both sides with alpha and if we are looking only with the relation of, of alpha then we can take this thing from the other side to the other side of the inequality then this will be alpha is less than or equal to px by alpha plus z minus because this is plus will be negative when going to the other side of inequality so this will be equal to a is less than or equal to p x by alpha plus z minus f naught x by alpha so this is the relation of alpha when alpha is positive where alpha is positive so what will be the relation of alpha with these terms when alpha is negative so we're looking 
add this expression first of all the very first thing that that must have to be changed is that inequality sign because when alpha is negative then this inequality will be shifted and will be equal to greater than or equal to so this will be here f not of x by alpha plus a greater than or equal to p of x plus alpha z and we have 1 by alpha so this is the when alpha is less than 0 right so we can uh, multiply or divide this 1 by alpha with negative sign in order to make it a proper shape in order to make it a proper shape so now negative 1 by negative alpha when it will be inside then it will be minus this minus outside minus p minus x by alpha minus z so time for manipulation so it is minus p minus x by alpha minus z and if we have to make this relation you know to view it with respect to a so this will be here with the negative sign as well so a is less greater than or equal to minus this expression minus f naught x by alpha so a is greater than or equal to minus p x minus alpha minus x minus alpha minus z minus f naught x by a so this relation when x is when alpha is greater than zero and this relation when alpha is less than zero what is the main difference between here is that sign also this sign because if we're going to take the negative out of this common it will be this plus this sign and this will be this minus this so now the other thing uh, you know to use this expression is to take any two arbitrary elements from u let's take any two arbitrary elements x x1 and x2 from u because the function of node is defined in u so that is why we will talk about the image of x1 and x2 with f0 so f0 of x1 minus f0 of x2 can also be written as because this is given that this functional is less than or equal to p x1 minus x x2 for all values that are taken from u as well so this is now we add and subtract that element z that are taken from that are taken from yes v1 so this will be equal to p x1 plus z minus z minus x2 so we'll make a pair of x1 plus z and taking the minus sign from it and this is x plus uh, x2 plus z so this will be less than or equal to by triangular inequality px1 px1 plus z plus p of minus z minus x2 so p of minus minus z minus x2 this is by triangular inequality we have to make pair of that f naught and p so this is the positive one so we will have f naught of x1 with okay we will make a pair with p of we have to make the pair of x2 with x2 that is inside so minus f naught x2 minus p of minus z minus x2 that is less than or equal to p x plus z minus f naught x1 here why we are doing this because we are looking for the supremum and infimum you know to talk about the majoritism condition or the extension condition so we will put the because this whole thing this whole thing is less than or equal to this whole thing then the supremum of this whole thing must also be less than the infimum of this whole thing so the supremum we will put the supremum of this negative whole thing equals to a1 and the supremum or supremum uh, infimum of this whole thing is equal to a2 why because we know that we know this thing with respect to the properties of the infimum the supremum because this whole thing is less than or equal to this whole thing then by definition or by the definition of the infimum of the supremum the supremum of this thing is also less than or equal to the infimum of this thing so let's put this so a1 is a supremum of this thing and now yes we have to specify that 
because x1 x2 are taken random so x2 for all the x2 that are taken from 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 you and a2 is equal to the infimum of this thing right this thing where x1 is taken from u so right and by definition we know that a1 is less than or equal to a2 and this is very important thing so let's visualize it for a while let this is a1 and this is a2 because they can be equal so the other case is that this is a1 and this is a2 because they're equal if it is equal then we will assume that this a this a is also equal to a1 is equal to a2 if it is not equal that a1 is less than or equal to a2 then we will assume that a is in between a1 and a2 because this is our choice of a a can be anything between a1 and a2 because we know that a1 is less than a2 then we can make a choice of a that is it in it is in between a1 and a2 but if a1 and a2 have the same value then we can choose a equal to a1 and a2 in order to make this relation so we will write a1 a2 with a1 as no a1 a2 with a a1 is less than or equal to a that is less than or equal to a2 so this is the relation of the three a or the real values a1 a and a2 then by this choice we can say that the functional v1 the functional v1 that is the functional no the functional of one that is defined in v1 satisfies the condition that that i'm going to write the condition here here that f1 of x is less than or equal to p of x why because we have this choice of a that can be making in between of a1 and a2 so by this we have proved that f1 is a better choice for the function of v1 that is the that satisfies the majority and property as well for f0 so now f1 is a functional that is the extension functional for f0 uh, from v1 and that satisfies when we're talking about the element that are taken from u that it will have the same value as f0 gives the value from u so by all the conditions that are here the first of all we have defined what is the images of that functional f1 so secondly we have defined that we are going to check that whether it is a linear or not then third in that we have sure we have shown that f1 is less than or equal to p by making these all condition then by using the supremum and infimum condition and by selecting that a1 in between a1 and a2 the next step will be that generalizing this on all of the spaces that f1 is taken for that space v1 that is slightly larger than u and the next step will be we have f2 a functional from a very uh, not a very but a bit bigger space than v1 named them v2 so the same condition will must have satisfied on that v2 and then we have so on to their infinite or finite spaces or I must say that countable or uncountable spaces so in the next video we will continue this by by discussing about what will be the case when it is countable upgrading a v1 to so on or uncountable so this is for now for most of the videos and you can subscribe this channel to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye